Hello. Darbian, what is going on, dude? How are you today? I'm doing well. Right how have the uh, have the early hammers been? Ugh. I actually have not been doing uh, the early hammer grind. It's it's so draining, and after like one or two hours, I'm done, you know? So right. not going for early hammer has actually been a lot more fun. We're, we're actually seeing World 5 and 6. It does exist. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. How are your runs today? Good. I got a, I improved the two-year-old PB in Super Mario Land. Nice. The world record is 12, I want to say 27. 25. 25. And the task, though, is like 12, like 18 or so, something not much lower, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know too much about the task, but I think it was done on like an inaccurate emulator, so I'm not sure if it does things that aren't actually possible or not. Dang. Right on. Well, but, uh, I mean, I, no, no, go ahead. I'm, I don't plan to go for the record in that game. It's just for fun, though. Right on, right on. That's that Sometimes after a break, that's the best thing to do when right. coming back to speedrun and just like um, kind of find something more that's fun. Sometimes the world record grind is super draining. Um, okay, so I just want to start off, make sure you you have your video going so we can play it at the same time. Do you yeah. have the YouTube rip? It's like 6 minutes and 30 seconds. I have the Twitch VOD rip, which is 6.29, so it's probably, you know, close enough. Probably the same time. So we can just start the video from zero so we can go at the same time. And, okay. Um, the first, uh, what I did with Karua, which was probably the best thing, was uh, try your best to just uh, answer as many questions you think are asked overall. I don't know if you get it a lot, but I get asked, like, you know, why don't I jump for the wand? Everyone knows the answer to that, but it still gets asked, you know? I feel I feel like that that is much easier with SMB3. Like, it's like I could talk 10 minutes about every single level in this game. It's like... Okay, so that's well, good. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try, though, in well, real time. Well, that's good, because if you want, uh, we can pause during a specific point, and you can give me the time of the splits, you know, go back there, and then you can use, like, visual references. We can also watch this video twice, or even three times, if you want. I mean, we don't have to. It's pretty short, though, so... Why don't we, why don't we pause every time uh, the screen turns black after a level? Is sure. You... Sure. I'm gonna have to get my uh, time cues. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm not a Mario 1 magician. <laughs> but I'm gonna give the 3, 2, 1, go, and when I say go, we're gonna start the video, and then... Uh, the stage is yours for a couple of things. All right? Okay. Okay, great. All right. Uh, three, two, one, go. Okay. So there you see me fail the flagpole glitch. And reset. <laughs> there I was like, wow, uh, world record broken. You know, so the reason we have such a long start delay is to manipulate the bullet bills shooting in world 8-2 to, to save 0 0.7 seconds there. It's oh, really wow. fascinating stuff. That is crazy. So this underground room, in order to save time with the flagpole glitch coming up, you have to do this room within four frames of the no left plus right task. Uh, and then here we're executing a trick known as the flagpole glitch, which you can credit sock folder for the setup we use. Bam. So now, rather how, now complicated. how hard is it? Well, so I, I can get in. Let me pause when this turns yeah, yeah. black. Let me see if I can so, get away. Okay. Um, so the flagpole glitch was, you know, it's been in the task since I got into speedrunning, uh, but it was never really considered feasible until uh, a few people looked into it. Like Mav6771 looked into it, and he had a, a really janky setup that I got to work about one out of 350 tries. Right on. Uh, but, but then Sock Folder got involved, and when he gets in involved, you get some pretty amazing <laughs> results. Yeah, dude, he's a, he's a monster. Yeah, so, I mean, the setup here... Uh, so coming out of the pipe, you need to run and jump and land on the first pixel of like the third step, which, whichever step you see me land on. And on the frame that you land, you need to release B for, I think, two frames and then repress B and A after that. And then you jump in the air. And then when you get to the to the actual block that the pole sits on, you... There's a there's a few there's a handful of sets of inputs you can do that'll work, but the one that I always go for in my head is to hold left for four frames and then release left and press jump on the fifth frame. Now to stop you there, now do you do that just strictly based out of comfort? Is that is that something through all of your practices and all the the attempts that one just works the best for you? That's like what your brain does and likes uh, and it just works. Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you if that's the one that I actually do most often. That's the one that I try to do, but it's entirely possible that I end up like accidentally doing a different one that works. Um, 
but I mean, that seemed like the simplest combination for me when I looked at the ones that, that could potentially work. So that's right what I've, I've operated with. And it's really not as hard as, as you think, like if I gave you a save state in the air falling to that block, I bet you would get it within two minutes. Of Eventually. Yeah. It's like when people say they're scared of the seven, one clip or clips in Mario three. Just save state right. there, you'll get it. I mean, it, half the time it's not even within your control. I mean, yeah, I mean, that part is easy, but if I were to give you a save state coming out of the pipe and then have you try it, that one that might take you, you know, a couple of hours before you get the whole setup uh, the first yeah. time. Okay, but, um, I mean, in this game where, you know, 21, I mean, overall this saves 0 0.35 seconds or 21 frames. So in a right game on. like this, that's, I mean, you got to go for it. That's all, that type of stuff. Yeah, well, of course, right? But um, one of the biggest questions, though, I think, is uh, how does this save time? Oh, right. So um, so it's I'm... actually kind of funny because before flagpole glitch, um, you know, we would always jump at the top of the flagpole because it was faster. And I'll get into that. Well, I guess I can explain that right now. The reason, the reason jumping at the top of the flagpole is faster than the bottom is because when... First of all, regardless of where you touch the pole, you have to wait for the flag to come down before Mario gets off of it. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't get off of the pole any earlier. But the reason jumping at the top is faster is because Mario gets off the pole at a higher spot. And he actually um, gets more air time, and he doesn't touch the block that the flag is sitting on. And normally that wouldn't matter, but the way the physics are implemented in Super Mario Bros., Mario actually accelerates faster when facing the direction opposite that of which he's moving. <laughs> yeah, I heard about and that. It just, it just so happens that, like, the the end of, like, that whole flagpole animation, when Mario gets off the pole, he's facing left but moving right. And he'll only be doing that as long as he's in the air. Yeah. So by, by jumping at the top, you get more air time, and you have more time in the air taking advantage of that increased acceleration. That's so strange. You, on most levels, it's enough to, to save a frame rule, which is 21 frame difference. Now, so, do you do you possibly have a time frame of when this was uh, discovered for RTA viable? It was uh, it was like summer or late early fall of 2016, I think. I think it was like two months before the first 4:56. Wow, somewhere around there. Insane. Um, but it, but to get back to the flagpole, so, I mean, pe one question we always get as runners is, why don't you jump at the bottom of the flagpole? It would be faster. But, and I, so I just explained why it's not faster. But but now we actually do jump at the bottom. <laughs> um, and it is faster, but for a different reason. But the reason flagpole glitch saves time is because it skips the animation of the flag coming down altogether. Like, mm -hmm. if you notice, if you were to go back and watch that, not that I'm telling you to do that right now, but... Well, I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> for the people... For the viewers, if you were to watch the run, you would notice that the flag never actually comes down. So that's where the time save from flag glitch comes nice. in. Nice. Now, to add on to a certain situation that I had to deal with is jumping for the one slower. Um, it is slower if you jump for the one, but because the task can now do the off-screen one grab, us RTA guys, I mean, we might as well go for it, right? We don't lose any time. Right. So sometimes you can get the off-screen one grab, and people are, you know, I thought jump for the one was slower, and it's just a, a very big, complicated... <laughs> we do things for a couple years, and then now we have to reverse everything we're saying. It's just, yep. a, it's just a headache. Okay, I'm going to get back to this How much save, actually? I don't know off the top of my head. I could, I could get the time. Now... What most people don't know is that you split when you grab the wand, so you skip the cutscene after you grab the wand, but you also grab the wand quicker. So you save time in one world, and then you save time in the next world. It's like a combo time save. Yeah. I'd probably say roughly around 1.3, maybe. So, all right, so I'm going to give you the three, two, one, and go, and then we'll go, okay? Okay, great. Three, two, one, go. Right on. So I'm at 34 seconds right now. Oh, really? I'm at 45. Well, okay. So hold on. Pause, pause it up. What time are you at? We'll go back to... I'm. Uh, at, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was talking video time, not not live split time. <laughs> okay, live split time, I'm 35. 35, 20. All right. All right, let me go to that then. Cool. Okay, I'm close enough. Okay, three, two, one, go. So this is actually the, 
simplest level in the run right now. Wow, I mean, it's so scary though in the bottom. It, it, it's it's a little. I mean, I play this level safe because of the way frame rules work. I can afford to hit left a few times to make some jumps easier, like this pipe second pipe jump there. Mm -hmm. um, now, how hard is that pipe jump? The average viewer jump... would be like, "How do you not get hit by the piranha plant?" Pipe jumps are one of those things where when you start practicing them, you'll say, how the heck does anybody ever do more than one of these in a run? Right. But then after you, you know, it's just like anything else, you know, you keep doing it and you become more and more consistent and then it becomes like a, you know, personal achievement to nail them all. Yeah. So I mean, you really don't have a choice going for, like eventually your PB will get to the point where you don't really have a choice. It's the easiest time save. Yeah. Uh, I paused it at one minute and one second. Yeah, that's where I am. Um, okay, I, I had a quick question, though, before you go on yeah. about the nitty-gritty of that level. Um, before you jump down into the warp zone with the three pipes, uh, upon watching your record, I noticed when you got the, the other warp to go to World 8, you jumped down and turned back and went in. But on this one, you just turned back on the ground and went down. Now, is that because you have time? Like, it's uh, not no, crucial? No, it's, it's because of the way the level is laid out. If... The ceiling is actually higher in one two than it is in the four two warp zone. Okay. And and I think that the wall might actually be further away from the pipe than it is in four two. I can't recall that for sure, but either way, it's because the terrain makes that method easier in one two. Okay. I feel like that's I'm not something sure which that can is go... faster. Yeah. But since you have frames to spare on one two, I that's just the way I've always done it. Yeah. Okay. Cosmic is confirmed. The wall is closer. The wall is closer. Two. Yeah. So is there the any other, gritty you want with this level? I mean, that level is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot that I did. However, um, 1-2 contains one of the two frame rules left to save that humans have actually achieved. And that's um, instead of going up top at the end, like on the, on the ceiling of the level and running to the warp zone, mm -hmm. you can do a very precise jump and clip into the pipe that you would take if you were doing warpless, um, but you clip into the pipe and run through the wall that way. And then you, um, you have to run to the middle of the warp zone room so that it loads properly. And yep. then you jump back to the pipe to go to world four. And that, if done optimally, saves one frame rule. Now you so, use I mean, that. that. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I have never actually executed that frame rule. Uh, the clip is hard enough just because it requires a one frame a tap otherwise you'll jump onto the pipe uh that you're trying to clip into and i suck at one frame eight taps so. <laughs> the 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 singus most smallest jump right one frame eight yeah, taps yeah. so so to solve the broken question that everyone has who says any percent is done technically only technically it is possible to still save a little bit of time yeah uh we'll definitely see somebody get a 455 you know before we're too old to keep up with speed running. We have. I don't know who, who it's going to be. I mean, we have somebody uh, stuck in a plate as a runner who he's like skipping all of like the little PBs. He's going straight for every single uh, frame roll in the game. Oh, okay. Oh, he's one of those guys. He's like, no, nope, yeah. top top tier only, and that's it. Yep. Yep. Right. And he's he's made it so far. I think his best run has made it to four dash two, tied with the task, which is insane. That is insane. Holy crap. All right, we'll give you the three, two, one, and go. Okay, great. Three, two, one, go. So this used to be the simplest level in the game back when I started speedrunning, and up until Flagpole glitch was introduced, it still was. However, this is uh, the second Flagpole glitch that we do. God, it's um, crazy to do two with how, how hard it can be. The only difference with this one, like the inputs at the pole are always going to be the same, and the inputs on the stairs are always going to be the same. Um, but the only difference with this one is that there's no convenient place that you can do a full jump from and land on the first pixel of the third step like you can in 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. So uh, what you have to do on this one is uh, release your A button in the air so that you land on the first step. So it's just slightly harder to, to get on that pixel, but once you do, the inputs are exactly the same. Do you still do one, your, one. your quadruple D-pad press? Quadruple? Oh, yeah, your, your, four, you... your four tap, right? You said you tap back... Uh, four times? No, no, I, I hold left for four frames. Oh, four frames, okay, I, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I mean, the input is, it's identical to 1-1, one, one, except you just have to manually time your jump to, to land on that uh, first pixel of the step. So, 
at this point in your run, are you like, ah, this is normal for me. I've done this many times. No, this is where, like, you'll see me minimize the chat. This is my, like, cutoff point for when a <laughs> run becomes serious. I can't, I can't deal with the memes right now. I, I mean, it's not, it's not all that serious at this point, but 4-2 is, uh, like, I need to focus level because the inputs are a little tricky. Um, yes. And then I don't want to have to, like, try to minimize chat between 4-2 and 8-1 because, like, the warp zone transition shorter. So I just do it now. Is a good way to put it that uh, when in terms of the run and your chances, like is the has the game given you a chance right now? Like, do you think to yourself at this point, you're like, okay, I actually yeah. have a chance right now, yeah. so now it's time. Yeah, it's, like, it's like this. Like, there's always that one point in whatever game you play where like a run becomes a real attempt. This is it. And yeah. For me, this yeah, getting past four one with two flag pull glitches that would be. It. However, like if I was doing like stuck in a plate is doing where I'm going for all frame rules. That would that point would probably be after one dash two. Insane. So, your heart rate go will go up a little bit, but not as much as we've seen before. No, at this point, it, right? I mean I I usually get anywhere from like, or at least I would get anywhere from like six to twelve of these, six to fifteen of these a night. I can't really remember, so they're not all that rare. Yeah, I mean, look at that face. Um, you're being a true G right now. It's not even, it's not even affecting you. You're like, what? I don't know what what frame you're paused on. <laughs> you you have a B input and a right in, uh, 140, 44 on the oh, okay. speed and slide. Um, Wait, 144 on the no, uh, 140, 44. Oh. On this on the okay, I got it. Live split. Uh, oh. is that it for that level? Yeah. Right on. Okay, so three, two, one, go. So this level, I'm actually going to do slower than I used to do it two PBs ago because um, the the way we used to save an extra frame roll in this level um, is harder than doing two flagpole glitches. So here we're executing a wrong warp. I'll explain that uh, at the end. And then the warp zone is pretty trivial here, except as as you pointed out, I play it a little differently than the one in one two. Yeah, that's for anyone in chat. That's what I was asking about what he did right there. Uh, yeah, so, how we jumped rather than turn back. Okay. So the history on well, first I'll explain the wrong work. Um, the way I understand it, which I've never personally verified the code, but this is the way it works in my head. Um, at any given point, the game has like one value in memory that says where to warp Mario to if he takes a warp right now, mm -hmm. and that value gets updated as you scroll the screen. So like. You know, when you scroll close to a pipe early in the level that, say, takes you to, like, a coin heaven, you know, that value gets updated to say, okay, if Mario takes a warp, take him to the coin heaven. And then when you get to another pipe, you know, later in the level that might take you to an underground room, that address gets updated when the screen gets to a certain position that says, okay, now if Mario takes a warp, send him to the to the underground coin room. Crazy. Um, and in 4-2... There's actually two warps very close together. There's the vine that everybody's used to taking that takes you to the warp zone. And then there's the pipe that I went down that would normally take you to a, to a coin cache. Yeah. And what we try to, like, if, if you just play normally, you can't enter that pipe without scrolling the screen far enough to trigger an update to that value in memory. So the pipe will always take you to the coin cache and the vine will always take you to the, to the coin heaven. But However, if you look... If you look back at how I played that level, you'll notice that I intentionally bumped on three objects, two walls in, in the elevator. That's and when one you right do, there. When you, when you do those backward bumps, each one pushes Mario ahead on the screen by like seven to 10 pixels. Um, and by pushing Mario ahead on the screen, you can actually reach the pipe without having to scroll the screen far enough to, to update that value in memory. So the game still thinks that the only possible warp you could be taking is the vine. Um, so I can take the pipe to access the warp zone, but the real time save comes from not having to watch the cutscene of the vine growing in the warp zone and then Mario climbing up it before getting off. You can yeah. just run immediately. No dancing on the vine either. Exactly. So hold on, I'm just going to stop you right there. Uh, the way it was explained to me, and I want I want chat to see this as well. So if everyone focuses right now, okay, there you go. If everyone focuses right now on the screen, look at where Mario is lined up with the text at the top of the screen, okay? So like it looks like Mario's pretty close to in between the two and the nine. And whenever he gets to the pipe, you can actually see even right now, after the first one, second one, he's close to being under the W in world. And that's exactly what he's saying by pushing himself forward. He's moving forward, and oh, it's just fantastic. 
so um prior to um flag pull glitch you know the, the run had gotten optimized enough to the point where we had to go for an extra frame rule save in this level and that's what's known as fast 4-2 and you did slow 4-2 yeah, this was slow for you. This is like the strat I would do at a GDQ, and I actually failed it the last time I did it at a GDQ. But it's this is like the safe strat. Mm -hmm. um, fast for two involves doing the same thing, except you skip one of the bumps. And the, what makes it hard is that in order for the wrong warp to be possible, you have to push Mario ahead on the screen by twenty pixels, and each bump can give you seven to ten pixels. So in theory, if you got two perfect bumps, two you would tenors. get just you would get just enough push to make it possible. However, even if you get that, uh, probably the hardest part is the pipe entry. Because you have exactly the right number of pixels needed, that means you can only enter the pipe on the very first pixel. Because if you go one pixel further, the screen will scroll yep. uh, another pixel and it won't work. So you have, to, you have to come to a complete stop on the very first pixel of the pipe and hit down. You can't just run on the pipe and hold down because Mario cannot be moving when you enter the pipe because the, the camera will catch up during the pipe transition for some reason and Insane. it won't work. It's almost as if it kind of like shifts a bit as you're entering the pipe. It's like it's right. not done, it's animated. Right. It's trying to like relocate with the screen where Mario... That's, so, that's silly. Um, Andrew G was probably the best one at that. And I think his success rate might have been in the 4 to 5% range. For, uh, two, my six, for two tens and a pipe pipe entry? Yeah, for, for, for fast 4-2, saving that extra frame rule. Um, my success rate was like 2 to 3% or something. So Crazy. it was a like back then before Flagpole Glitch, 4-2 was the level where if I beat it, then I was on a, a really good run. Would you be able to provide information on how many runs got to that point within a thousand attempts? Uh... Well, an estimate. I I would say each night I would do a hundred to a hundred and fifty attempts, and on an average night I would get anywhere from zero to like four or five usually. Insane. So a lot of a lot so, of a lot of grinding. So that's what I was saying. At this point yeah. right now, you're like the game has given me a chance. Yeah. It's time. Crazy. Yeah. So I actually, but prior to flagpole glitch being uh, discovered, I had done a run that got all frame rules we were aware of, including fast forward two, and I had a, a pretty good eight four. So I was completely satisfied with, with my PB and I honestly can't say if I ever would have tried to improve it. Um, but now that flagpole glitch got introduced, uh, that's three new frame rules plus the one in one two. So it opens yeah. everything back up. So, yeah. so that time save that I had in four two is not in the current record. So that's the second frame rule, um, that somebody could save. However, there is now uh, a newer method for saving that that uh, frame rule that involves doing a wall clip and letting Mario get zipped instead of bumping onto things to get your pixels. Oh uh, it's known as it's known as four two zero blaze it because the guy who found it his name is four twenty blaze it. <laughs> four twenty blaze it. I think I've seen him before. Yeah. So. Um, I think Cosmic uh, showed me that at the the GTX yeah. panel. He showed me it going uh, through the wall. Yeah, so Damn. that's that's much more consistent. I think Cosmic can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the consistency of that can probably get up to the consistency of a flagpole glitch. So it's it's absolutely more viable. Would you need um, something like that to get a uh, uh, 55? Yeah, to get a 55, you would need every single frame rule. You would need the one two frame rule, the four two frame rule, and then everything I did in the record. And what's the task? Four. The task is a four fifty four or dot zero something, I think. Oh my gosh, insane! Okay, so I am at two minutes and nine seconds. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do the countdown. Three, two, one, go. So this is probably now one of. I mean, this level is just straightforward platforming. You do a whole bunch of pipe jumps. It's, I think it's the longest level in the game. Um, just no slowdown at all whatsoever. But unfortunately, there's more to this level than than just getting through it without slowing down at all. Um, if you just play the game casually, or not casually, but um, there's a there's a phenomenon known as what I call judges in this level, and we actually figured out how they they work now. But the gist of it is that, um, very clean though. Twenty five percent of the time, when you beat World Four Dash Two, 
you are uh, going to get what we call bad judges on 8-1. Okay. And if okay. you get bad judges, that basically means that you will lose a frame rule. You'll lose one frame, but the level is so tight that it causes you to lose a frame rule. So you'll you'll lose 21 frames by doing nothing wrong, even if you play it perfectly. Um, and the way to mitigate that is to hit the very first pixel of the star block in the middle of the level. You saw me hit the star block. That's a, that's a necessity regardless of whether you got the bad frame or not. If you don't hit the star block, you're automatically going to lose a frame roll in the level. Okay. And the reason for that is because there's like... The Y subpixel position of the power ups is shared partially by the flag. <laughs> so by like by hitting the star block, it causes the flag to be one pixel lower on the pole. And that causes it to get to the bottom one frame earlier, saving you a frame that you would otherwise would lose. And since there's zero frames of leeway on this level, that is the difference between uh saving zero point three five seconds or or losing it. So that's so essentially I mean just all things aside, it's a very crucial jump. Well, like, yeah, it's yeah. like 75% of the time hitting the block anywhere will be fine for you. Okay. But 25% of the time, if you have the bad judges, you have to hit the very first pixel of the star block, and that will negate them. Does the average speedrunner always just aim for the first pixel no matter what? Because, I, I mean, I you usually... don't know for sure what you're... Like, how do you know if you've got the good or bad? You, you Well, when I ran it, you didn't know. So I would always aim for the second pixel, and sometimes I would be early and hit it. But now I think there's somebody came up with a, a way you can like stomp an in a, a buzzy beetle at the beginning of the level and you can tell based on the pixels around it whether you got the bad judges or not. Weird. That's cool though. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, but like it's amazing how many little things have been found on this level. Cause back in the, when I started, there were all these myths and rumors spread around about how, why you lose the time there and what you can do to mitigate it, but none mm. of them worked. Yeah. Um, so now we like have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. To be honest with I you, am... when I watched this, I had I had no idea there was any special tech in this level. Right. I was like, right. oh, this is. I was I'm impressed by the sheer platforming, which is amazing. Um, but there's so even some people. Some people might wonder why we don't do the flagpole glitch here, um, and it's because the flagpole glitch, if I recall, only saves eleven frames, and since you're already at the very end of a frame roll on this level. Uh, you would have to save 21 frames to actually save another frame rule. So, so the like, flagpole glitch wouldn't help you. It's like relieving, though. It's like, thank God, I don't have to do another one, right, kind of, right? right. It's... Although somebody does have uh, like a potential setup to do the level fast enough to save 21 frames, which involves like a doing like a fast acceleration to start the level and then like a super precise method of doing the flagpole glitch, not sock folders method, but nobody... Has really spent a lot of time trying to do that yet. So does this does this game not have the same kind of corner boosts that Mario Three has? Now I know you did your no. you, okay, so you can't jump off the right side of a block and have the block Correct. push you forward. You can't do that when you're when you're standing still, it will. But if you're, when you're running, you can't use that to your advantage. And just Dang. because I see it, Cosmic says corrected me. The flag saves fifteen frames instead of eleven. Okay, I am at three minutes exactly okay 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 so three two one go so this is the level with the trick known as the bullet bill glitch at the end it's pretty straightforward uh everything up until the end but this is the level that we waited so long at the title screen for and i'm actually the enemies that i'm hitting are very precise here i i have to hit these exact two koopas and then i have to hit these three koopas just so and it causes this cannon to fire to the right as soon as I get past it. And then I wait for the bullet bill, and then I use that to do what's known as the bullet bill glitch or the full flagpole glitch. And this trick, whereas the normal flagpole glitch uh, just prevents the flag from coming down to save time, this one not only prevents that animation, but it also prevents the animation of... Um, Mario walking Mario, Mario having to walk to the castle. So you would think it would save a ton more time but since you have to wait for the bullet bill, it only ends up saving two frame rules or 0 0.7 seconds, assuming you get a very good shot. Yeah, which is highly based on your accurate stomps on the turtles. Right. It, so this, we used to use a different, we used to wait a different amount of time at the title screen. Uh, and we would get to 8-2 in 
I would say it was closer to 50-50 whether you got uh, the fast shot or a slightly slower shot. But now um, a runner by RCD named RCD came up with this uh, frame rule that is much more consistent with d giving you the good shot. So we all switched to it, even though it means waiting an extra like four or five seconds at the title screen. So uh, right now, Cosmic's saying slow shot. Is he referring to what you're talking about or is he saying you got a slow shot? Uh, I think he might be referring to to his PB, which got a slow shot. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 sometimes it'll shoot slightly later, and then you can still do the bullet bill glitch, but it'll only save one frame roll instead of two. Now, one quick question that some people might have. Now, you wait at the start, right, to start the game right. at the precise time. Now, um, if you screw up, like, frame rules throughout the other levels, does that affect the bullet or yeah. no? Yeah. It does? No, you have, you, you have to arrive at this... The, the, the whole idea is to spawn the bullet in a certain frame window from power on. Okay, that's it. And yeah. because because of because frame rules exist, you can you'll all, assuming you don't make any mistakes, you'll always start eight dash two on the exact same frame from power on. Like if I'm even with my splits, it'll always be the exact same frame. Amazing. That's that's um, like a little comforting though as well, because it's like it's right. like a, it's a reward for being able to play consistently well and to fully understand how the game works. It's like there's there. a, actually. There's with the frame rule we use. There's two consecutive frame rules that can give you uh, the good shot. You just do a different setup in eight two for them. So, um, it actually, you could play with that and have a window where you could make one mistake early in the run and still not be dead. But crazy. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Damn. So right now, um, okay. Hold on. I'm gonna pause it at. Oh, so we have. I want to answer Harriet. Harriet Pubman's question about how the title screen setup was found. Okay. Bl Blubler is the person to be credited for coming up with the RTA viable bullet bill glitch setup. Um, he was the one to take the record from Andrew G back in, I think it was, was it 2014? Um, I believe it was 2014. And he got the very first 457 in the game that Andrew had been trying for, for very long. Uh, but Blubler discovered that you could, um, wait at the title screen to manipulate when the cannon shot an 8-2. Insane. And so he w he used that to achieve the first 450 zone. Like, his 8-4 wasn't as good as, as Andrew G's in his PU, but because yeah, he those... saved so much time in 8-2, it, it didn't matter. Strats, man. It's all about the strats. I, I yep. would highly recommend any anybody speedrunning. Focus more on your strats and your ability to play. It's the most crucial aspect to speedrunning. It's insane. So, um, how long do you think it took him to discover that? Like, how much work do you think he had to put into that to make it viable and to make it consistent, more importantly? I wonder how many roadblocks and dead ends he hit. I mean, he would be the one to ask. If, to be honest, I, like, I, I always saw him, like, his stream announcement Yee! saying, you know, World, <laughs> Super Mario Bros. World Record attempts, but I didn't pay much attention to what he was actually doing until you know he got it and then suddenly everybody was paying attention and we all saw it for ourselves um so i mean he he was you know he explained exactly what he did and how it how it all worked i don't know how long he spent on it but i think he Same. documented everything in the uh the sda thread so somebody could look there if they wanted to find out that's insane okay so before we before we continue I, I, the first thing i want to ask is how are you feeling right now in your run Oh, no, this is, like, so the run, as I said, after you beat 4-2, that's when the run becomes an attempt. Mm -hmm. And then the next big point is achieving the bullet bill glitch, which I just did. So this is, like, I mean, this is where I kind of, you know, you kind of enter that zen state where... Well, of course. Your heart rate your heart rate actually went up almost by 10 within only a couple seconds. Yeah. You're just like, and, and, and it's going to go up a lot more oh, now, yeah. through 8-3. Um, oh, yeah. Like, my heart rate's going up right now. Just It's so crazy. I watch it, I'm like, I gotta be near a hospital right now, just watching this crap. <laughs> I mean, this used to be, like, so it was, <laughs> like, you know, back in, back at, you know, when, like, Blubbler was running and this was the strats, like, you know, this was the point, there was really nothing up until this point that was all that challenging, and so this was, like, the, the first point where things got intense, but now that you add in all these flagpole glitches, yeah. it's, like, just, it, the pressure is just more and more with every trick you have to do to get to that, that same point. Now, now, personally, how much, how much did you want this? Like, 
when you're thinking in your head, are you are you saying to yourself, please, please just let this work, or are you just saying, okay, you know, I just have a chance, be calm? Well, like, what's the average Darbian to Darbian insight in these in these situations? So, I mean, anytime I return to this game, my goal is always to improve my PB. Um, so if I strictly wanted to just if my if my primary goal is improving my PB, I would I would uh. I would be in world eight dash three. I would, it would make sense to not do what I'm about to do in this video <laughs> and just play eight, three, the same way I did in my PB and try to play eight, four, a little bit better. Like that's the easier path to the record mm -hmm. in my opinion, but you weren't about that um, lifestyle. Well, it's point. like, it's like when you have these opportunities, you, in my opinion, you just need to like take them. You're not going to have that many runs to this point. So, um, like I wanted to incorporate another frame rule, so and you, you know you, uh, people get a lot of questions like, oh, how did you like do that? This runs so crazy. It's like, well, you know, you just gotta go for it, and that's how those runs make history, right? right. Going safe right. didn't didn't make the books, you know. Being a plebeian didn't make the books. Okay, so I'm at three thirty seven oh eight, ready to start the eight three. Three thirty seven. All right. So what I'm gonna say before we start it. Okay. Um, so this level has another bullet bill glitch. Oh yeah. Um, oh, you're at three thirty seven oh eight. Is three thirty seven oh eight? Yep. Okay. So this is the hardest bullet bill glitch, and I want you to focus. And when I start the level, you can look at my input display. So in the other levels, your sub pixels lined up such that flagpole glitch was possible without doing anything special, but in this level, you have to manipulate them to make it possible, and the way we do that is by delaying. Normally, you would start a level by holding B and right to run immediately. But in this level, we're going to just hold right and walk for a little bit and then press B on a specific frame. And that will line our sub pixels up to make the flagpole glitch possible. So you can look at my input display in the top. When I start the level, I'm only holding right. And shortly after I walk past the castle, then I'll start holding B. Um, so we can start when you're ready. Hello? Oh, sorry, sorry. My mic was off. I, I had a bite of a pasta. Here, let me go back. <laughs> <laughs> 330... Okay. I'm at, I'm at 337. So. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, whatever. Uh, okay, 3, 2, 1, go. Go. Sorry, pasta's too overpowering. I'm sorry, guys. So... When I do that B press, I don't know if I did it correctly immediately, but I can tell from the behavior of those first sets of hammer bros mm -hmm. whether I did it right. So I saw those bros, and I know that I did it right. So I'm kind of like, I feel like, okay, I have to go for the flagpole glitch now. It's like, I got the setup. I really have to go for it, even though it, the odds are so low that I'm going to get it. Um, but and with you that... just had a heart attack. <laughs> I mean, so again, the setup is the same, except it's more similar to 401 because you, you still can't do a full jump to get to the... A pixel you need to land on and as cosmic pointed out i actually didn't land on the right pixel on this one i landed one pixel further but i messed up my other inputs enough where it like balances out because oh there, there is like an alternative meth there is like a different sock folder setup where you land one pixel further but do a different set of inputs and i was just so nervous that it happened to work out that way it's like i i was laying on one thing but then i was early on something else yeah so I, I didn't realize that I did that at the time. I thought I just did the normal setup, but yeah, it's called the D50 setup because that's what the subpixel value ends up being. But oh my gosh. Um, so the that's, D, that's, the D50, yeah. that's the frame rule that I saved uh, in this run compared to my previous PB. I mean, you can see it on the split. Um, I saved exactly 21 frames there. Okay, I just counted it out. In 13 seconds, you went up. 30 on your heart rate no nope. that is fast so right now because you know you you know you're on a run where it's like this is a ridiculous like are you done with this category no i i mean i'm i'm done for now but i anticipate someday you know if i get good enough at four two then oh. i would you know try runs for fun again but insane insane okay i'm at 409.59 okay yeah I'm, I'm there too so um, the weird thing too is it's all, it's almost as if those little slights in in human error kind of evened it out. You know, if you played perfectly, it might not have evened out. 
is essentially what you were saying the the flagpole glitch well it, it's like a, it's like i i jumped i landed on the wrong pixel but then i did the next set of inputs earlier than i would if i landed on the right one and it that happens to work with this setup um it's just it's just a different combination of in, different timing for the like yeah the same inputs um it's it's just one of those things where you know the, you can do different sets of inputs and have it work and i happen to do a set that i wasn't intending to do so you you nerves. weren't going for that and were you able to pick up on those slights or did you just continue doing what you normally no, do and it um, just worked out that way no i just did what i normally do and it, it worked out like i'm sure a lot of runners accidentally get a flagpole glitch the way i just did it there like in one one mm -hmm. um because you never really know for sure unless you go back and watch it but um insane yeah it's just i mean it happens sometimes that's so crazy okay i mean Four, I, I was oh, just nine. happy to even like i'm just happy to even like get an attempt at it. it's like you it, your heart's racing so much right. there. It's like, it's amazing you can do anything. And to finally see something other than 0, 0.0, I cannot believe what that must <laughs> be like for everyone. Well, this, I think this was either the second or third run that I had on this pace going into 8.4. Insane. Um, so I, like, I mean, for somebody who's done 27,470 attempts, like, to be on a pace that you've only been on once or twice before, it's... Oh, I know that feeling, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, four oh nine fifty nine. You ready? You ready for the yep. finale? Right, so on this one, uh, could we pause every time I go down a pipe? Yes, definitely. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Here we go, boys. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So. Chat's going crazy. I'm just trying not to have a heart attack here. So I mean, we'll pause here just because I said it. So go down that pipe. Yeah, um, I'm still on the same screen. Okay, transition. I'm on the other screen yeah. now. Uh, okay. 4, 422. Okay. Um, so the only thing interesting about the first room, that, that's very easy room. Like, no speedrunner is going to mess that up. Um, well, 95% of the time you won't. The only interesting thing is you've noticed that Piranha Plant disappeared in the pipe that I was going down. That's just, I think it has to do with the way the maze is implemented in that room. Because if you keep going, it'll wrap back around until you go down the right pipe. Yeah. So that plant's always going to disappear on the NES version. Uh, you won't die to it. So you can just uh, run right only... into it, and then he kind of like flashes, he's gone, and you just go down the pipe. Yeah. So the he only doesn't half... prevent you from going in as fast as possible then? No, no, it's as if he's never, He's. it's as if he's not even there. Nice, um, Nintendo, nice. But sometimes, a lot of us have missed entering that pipe before. Like, we'll land on top of it, but we either won't hold down at the right time, or, or we'll land too far to the right. And we'll just run past it, and that's the end of the run. That has happened to people on record pace before. Ouch. But, I mean, that's, like, super uncommon. It's just yeah. a comic thing. Okay, so in this room, before we start, um, this is a, a pretty challenging room. Uh, I'm going to be holding B and right coming out of the pipe. And if you do that, you know, you'll fall into the you'll fall into that little pit you see between the, the first two pipes. And if you continue to hold B and right, you have one frame to jump out of that pit without hitting the other pipe. Ooh, that's so risky. So so we start off with a frame perfect jump, and then I'm gonna like do a few more jumps, and then I'm gonna execute a wall jump on the floating pipe that you normally should reveal a hidden coin block to get up into. Okay. So the wall jump is gonna be you know pixel perfect, frame perfect, like Mario 3, except I think it's easier in Mario 1 because of sub-pixel speeds or something. Okay, so before we start, whenever I used to watch Mario 1 speedruns back in like 2005, 6, and 7, you know, Andrew G going crazy, I, it always used to frustrate me. Whenever you wall jump up the pipe, why do you turn backwards? How do you, like, why don't you, you why don't you lose time? Like, why don't you just hold forward and go in the pipe? How's that not faster? It's for the same reason that jumping at the top of the flagpole is faster, because Mario will accelerate faster when facing the direction opposite that of which he's moving. So when you do... When you do the wall jump off of the pipe, you stop. You lose all horizontal speed because you're against the wall. Mm -hmm. So then when you clear the pipe, you want to get to the middle of it as quickly as possible. So you're accelerating from nothing to, you know, trying to get in the middle of the pipe. So you want to be facing left while doing that. Crazy. Disclaimer, I don't know my dates before chat goes crazy. <laughs> I just know back um, when I used to watch it, I didn't understand why. Right. I mean, so... so yeah, so you're going to see two frame perfect tricks here, um, but there are setups to make it 
I think it makes the wall jump two frames and you don't have to turn around and you don't have to do this one frame jump to start the room. And like that, that's what I do in like warp list because it's not as, as optimized, but in this category, you know, I'm not going to waste a run like this, uh, you know, losing, I forget how many frames you lose doing that. It might even be the same that I saved in eight, three. So there's no doing the safe strats, not an option anymore. So now one just... more thing before we start, um, in Mario three, you have to get a correct sub pixel value to even get a chance to get your single frame jump into a wall. Do you have that in right. this? Um, or can you just jump at I, the right angle and you'll get that that chance for the single frame jump every time? Cosmic could correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like sometimes there are sub pixels that make the wall jump not possible. Um, so but since, since we're hitting left, we're essentially getting a random sub pixel, but I think most of the time it, it will be possible, but sometimes you'll get like a, you'll have a sub pixel that lets you do like a two frame wall jump. So Mario, like will have an opportunity to stop facing left. He'll face right as you do the wall jump, but it's super slow. I think cosmic had that happen in one of his PDs. Damn. I think his first 457 had that actually. That's a little bit yeah. better. That's that's better than executing perfectly in the game, but still being like, nah, no, not good enough. You know, so that's, right. that's not the end of the world. Okay, 422. Okay. Ready to press play. Everything you just explained, yep. guys, in the span of like three seconds. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. We're going to go down the pipe. pipe. One frame jump. A couple jumps. And then the wall jump into there okay i paused on the next section now right now yeah. this is when you're like this is it so what do you what do you need right now good hammer brother and bowser rng no you're this room this room is probably the as bad as that last room was this is the probably the scariest room probably <laughs> because um, the vod's paused so and i'm still nervous <laughs> we're going to be executing a wrong warp here um your intended your intent so you'll see like a lava pit once we start going and you're intended to jump over that and enter the pipe on the other side of it to take you to the water zone yeah to okay. go to the water zone however for this the same way it works and you know the wrong warp worked in four two um what we're going to do is we're going to scroll the screen far enough to update that value in memory so it's set to take you to the water zone if you take a warp and then we're going to backtrack to a pipe we just went past yeah and enter it so that we we can get there a little bit faster by not having to go quite as far. Yeah. But the the challenge is like obviously you want to scroll the screen the exact right amount to make it work. But if that's you what don't makes it hard. If you come up one pixel short, uh the wrong work won't work because you didn't scroll it far enough to update that that address. And if you go for every pixel you go further, it's like you're penalized twice because it's like you're going further, but then you have to backtrack so you you pay the price by going too far and then coming back to, having to come back further. Oh so it's gosh. like, you can't really play it safe, but you also can't be hyper aggressive. I forget if I got, I think I might've got one pixel far in this, or maybe I got perfect. I can't remember. We, Cosmic says we've all lost world record to yeah. stopping a pixel short. Gosh, I, dang yep. it. Yep. That's but, happened to all of us. But in your and, head, and, you must be thinking right now, not this run, please. Out of all the runs in my life, this one just has to be the one to yeah. not do it. You just have to, like, when you're in this situation, you just have to rely on your muscle memory, like, all that stuff you've practiced. You can't say to yourself, like, you know, oh, I got to play this safe. Don't mess this up. Or I, you know, I'm going to play it. You know, I'm going to be really aggressive here because I want to get the first pixie. It's like, you have to do exactly what you've you've always done. Yeah, don't let your mind juke you. Um, yeah, like, I think the last time I was in this run, I actually... All right, the last time I was on this pace, I had like a bad wall jump, but I was still, uh, you know, ahead. But then in this room, like when I backtracked a uh, cheap, like there are flying cheaps in this room, a cheap got in my way on my way to the pipe and killed the run, basically. Damn. Because, um, because I mean, on certain frames, like the cheaps are frame dependent. So um, there's always the chance like you're on a frame where they jump at an inconvenient time and interrupt you. But Insane. All right. 429 yep you ready to go um do you want to pause when we when we enter the water area or do you want to let the water area go uh we can let the water area we could actually let the rest of the run go if you want okay sure it's up to you um 429 so three two one go so we're gonna we're gonna jump past this pipe and then backtrack to it 
and that will allow us to do the wrong one. I got a 57 on the timer, which is generally means you did it pretty well. And that's Not your, necessarily perfect. Yeah, and that's your personal time key. You did the, yeah. the palm, the palm wipe on the yep. on the leg. That's yep. good. So here you just you never want to touch the ground here. Um, and then in the final room, the hammer bro bop is free. Okay. Sometimes you'll get a bad poto boo that kills you, or sometimes Bowser you have to jump at his hammers. But fortunately, he came forward, so it was a pretty easy room. Actually, do you the have only a... threat? The only threat of losing time there was jump was touching the axe further to the right than needed because that's a frame lost for every pixel further you go. But yeah. I had perfect axe grab. Can you react to Bowser quite easily though? Like you, you have enough time to look mm -hmm. at Bowser and be I like, mean, which pattern is I he mean, doing, and react all, to it. All you, all you can tell, like at least all I can tell in real time, is whether he's jumping forward or not. If he's coming forward. Then I just run under him like I did here. Mm -hmm. Any other pattern, you're going to jump through his hammers. Which is very scary, would you say? Yeah, I mean, the pattern changes on every frame, so it's not like there's a safe spot that you can always jump at and get through. But so you got in lucky, my experience, in my, yeah, I, I got very lucky here. Um, but in my experience, if you do have to jump through the hammers, uh, for my practice, you would try to jump as close to Bowser as possible because that seemed to be like, the place where the most frames had a sweet spot, a safe spot there. That's insane. But uh, like some West had had runs, I, I forget what pace they were on. They were either record pace or or like tied record pace. I actually know he had a run with the eight three flag poke, which on this space make it to the final room of the game, and I think the Potobu got him because he got unlucky. <sighs> that would be the worst. What do you think's worse, and... the, the Potobu or no hands? <laughs> I I mean I don't know I I feel like the hands I feel like the hands are not as bad just because you still have so much run after that yeah whereas right? this You're is like, like literally seconds. nothing there's like one jump after that right the, the only way I could see hands being worse is is only during a warpless run and that's because it's a like fifty minutes in right that's yeah, right that's about it but yeah you make a a really good point so with that being said um. Is there anything very crucial that you want to let everyone else out there know about your run? I I mean not about my run specifically, but just because people always ask, no, the game is not dead. I've you know, I've explained to you two Thank additional God. frame rules that humans have saved, uh, in Worlds one dash two and four dash two. So that's those two frame rules together make up zero point seven seconds, not to mention just doing eight four more cleanly. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's where the like the the goal of 455 comes from because um you take off 0.7 seconds from this run and that's like a 455.8 um that is you know if you, if you look at my twitter like i i, I tagged a, a whole bunch of people who all have the potential uh oh to nice beat this, to beat this run cosmic uh stuck in a plate some less andrew g all of them like have the ability to do it and and I wouldn't even say that I'm the best at it. I just happen to have the best time now. It's like I think that for every single trick in the run, there's somebody who's more consistent than me at each one. Yeah, it's but... like a it's like a, an all over the place. Everyone's good at their own little thing, depending on what the trick is, right? Everyone's got their little niche. If if I were to say that I was the best at one thing in this run, it might be just playing under like record pace stress. The stress just because. I've like, I mean, this is, I think this is like the fifth time I've improved the record. So it's like, I've been there before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that's it's like, I, I, I went through all my like growing pains back with the fast four, two stuff where, you know, I had like a dozen or more runs in eight, four fail. So it's like, I, I went through all those failures back then. So now it's like. I don't know. It's like in my head, it's like the run. When I get there, it's like almost too important to screw up, and somehow I don't screw it up. See, um, it's cool that you say that because I could relate to that a lot. When I was grinding early hammer runs, people would say, Well, why don't you just create a ROM hack where you get the early hammer every time in World 2 and then practice from there? And the reason I say that doesn't work is because I can't practice the amount of stress that getting early right. hammer causes. I mean, you need to have that uh, stress to, to be able to play through it and overcome you know yep. to strive through something that that just really doesn't happen often so that's a, a very big important part but with that being said um cosmic's done an amazing job actually answering a whole bunch of questions is there any questions that you want to answer um in chat before i go to my little last topic here
Uh, I mean, if people, I haven't been looking at all the questions, but if people would like to ask anything now that wasn't answered otherwise, yeah, uh, definitely give ask them a chance right to yeah, post them. Yeah, give them a post. But in the meantime, um, adre Adrenaline Junkies need to do fast forward two runs. Yeah. Oh, there's, yeah. There's so, Harriet, he plays it. so Harriet Pubman. So before I mentioned that, um, you know, we used like Bloodler used a different delay at the title screen when he first did Bullet Build Witch, and that's what we all used initially, which gave like the 50 50 manipulation. But then, oddly enough, um, and, I, and then I said like our, a runner named RCD came up with the frame rule that, that I used here, but there was a frame rule between those two that we actually got from a cheated run that was submitted, where that you know, like we, we determined that you know it wasn't a legitimate run just because of the strategies used, but we noticed that he got um, a very good shot in 8-2 on a frame rule we weren't aware of. Yeah. So somebody tested it and confirmed that it's better than the one we were using. So it's like a cheated run ended up leading to <laughs> to, the, to that discovery. And then once that frame rule was found, then you know people looked at the ones around it, and RC, that's how RCD came up with the one like directly next to it that was even better. Um. So it's just funny how like the oddest sources can end up like changing runs, even if like one's as optimized as this. Would you uh, rather save the frame rule in one two or four two? Four dash two is a like much 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 easier, and that's coming from somebody who's not very good at it, but coming from somebody who has never been able to, to do the one two frame rule and has done the four two you know a bunch of times in practice. Okay, and the most important question: What is your favorite topping on pizza? <sighs> My favorite to cheese, I guess. <laughs> Since that is optional now. That is optional. Cheese. Sorry, I had to answer. That's Feeny's question right there. Um, okay, well, uh, you guys know Darbian. His his uh, handle is in the title right now. If you guys, if you guys don't know him, go give him a follow. Um, he's actually I am. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's getting back into a few consistent streams a couple days a week now. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, he's coming back to streaming. Yep. The vacation is over. The vacation is over. So I just wanted to ask you a couple questions that um, people who aren't fully into speedrunning or are trying to get into speedrunning, something that they could relate to. So what what got you into speedrunning? And if you don't mind answering, like when did you start speedrunning? Not so much so, watching, but when did you start speedrunning? So... What got me into speedrunning? So I had actually seen speedruns like on YouTube before I got into it. Um, but like I'd see these videos like you know Ocarina of Time beaten in you know an hour and thirty some minutes or whatever, and I'd sit there and watch them. But there were like there was like no no camera, no microphone. It was just just the gameplay, and I would sit there and like you know I'd wonder. Like, is this even done by a human or is this just like done on a computer or is this legitimate or not? Or mm -hmm. like how, what am I seeing? Like, why do they keep dropping bugs and picking them up? And so I just kind of <laughs> brushed it off as like one of those things where, you know, people are going to claim all this stuff on the internet and nobody knows for sure what it is. So I didn't really care about it. But um, during, during January of 2013, somebody sent me a link to AGDQ, the AGDQ stream. Ooh, nice. And I tuned into that and that was where I, like I saw these same speed runs but here I saw like a real human in a room holding a normal controller uh playing on a normal TV, normal game and doing those same tricks that I saw in those videos but like you know they were there explaining what they're doing and then that's when I realized that there's like this whole community that studies these old games that I love, like, I'm, you know, I'm always been a retro gamer and I still have all my, my old consoles and stuff. So mm -hmm. I saw this community that not only played all these old games still, but actually like dissected them and played them with the, uh, intent of completing them as fast as possible. So I just got sucked in that entire weekend. If I could point to one run that, uh, really, really did it for me, it would have been runner guys, hundred percent Ocarina of time run during nice. that event. So. That's a very good run. Uh, I have a quick question before I, I, we continue on this topic. What would you say your rate of playing retro games was at that point in 2013 compared to now? Would you say that speedrunning has slightly saved you um, from slowly weaning off playing retro gaming? 
Oh yeah, I would say that for sure. As, like, as much as I loved the games, I was I was getting to the point where I just liked having them available instead of actually playing them. Like I, it was just always comforting for me to like have all the all my consoles hooked up and available to play, even though I wouldn't always necessarily play them. I mean, every now and then I would get the itch to play through the Donkey Kong Country trilogy or yeah, of course, or do of course. some do some Mario or you know do a hundred twenty stars over the course of a week or something. But it's not like I was sitting there every day playing them or even every week or every month. Right on. Um, I guess my my next question would be what what exactly does speedrunning mean to you? Like like when you sit back and you think about why do I speedrun? You know, like I understand why you got into speedrunning. You know what I mean, and and what caught your attention? But why did that make you um, want to do it? Is because like as a child, did you always think you were the best at video games, or have you always been interested in uh, pushing a game to its limits? Uh, have you always hundred percent game any game you've played? Like why? What does it mean to you to be a, to be a speedrunner? Like, well, I mean, so I you know I I never thought I was the best. Um, but I did always like single player games more than multiplayer, and I would always try to hundred percent any game that I had if it was within reason. Um, right on. But I mean, the short the short answer is, it, you know, it's like any other hobby. It's it's fun. I enjoy it, so that's what I spend my time doing. Like I don't I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't I have Netflix. I don't. <laughs> I think the last movie I went out to to see in a theater was almost ten years ago. Oh my gosh! So this is just like this is what I like to do in my free time. That's good, though. Um, That's good. Um, but, like, in terms of what I actually get from it, uh, one thing that I missed when I graduated from school uh, was, like, that getting that, like, constant feedback. Like, you know, you'd get an assignment, you'd do it, you'd get graded on it. Um, yeah. And you'd immediately, like, what, what you put into it is what you got out of it, whereas in, like, the working life, you know, you might have, like, an annual review once a year, but you're not always going to get, like, totally honest feedback whereas like exactly. in speed running speed running you get it every single every single attempt if you put in you put in practice on some level uh you know getting more consistent at it or or incorporating like a harder strategy you see the feedback the next time you you play it on on your timer you see that gold split yeah exactly that that's you you know your references and and even on long, alongside that i mean like chat other runners too you got people who previously had the world record that you that you took from coming to tell you you did you know you did an amazing job i loved when you did this and this you know what i mean stuff like that too oh yeah yeah the community is just you know phenomenal it's like if i'm if i you know it's it's so amazing how like if i put in mario 64 and start playing something i'll have like a handful of mario 64 runners come and chat and give me advice and tell me what i'm doing wrong or answer my questions if i have it's like I mean, it's just even I'm guilty of that. I know. Yeah. I know when you play Mario Three, I come in. Yeah, right? and you yell at me for playing the All Stars version. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, I guess. Okay. So before we wrap up, one last thing. Uh, anyone out there, what what would be a little shred of advice you have for uh, anyone out there looking to get into speedrunning, or beginning speedrunning, or people who are getting discouraged from speedrunning? Um, People who, whenever they play Mario One, they can't get a four fifty seven. You know what I mean? They're getting discouraged. Like, do you have any, any little bit of advice for those people? My advice would be to not stop. Do what's fun to you, and don't worry about what other people think. Like when I got into speedrunning, I would look at games and wonder if if they're even worth speedrunning because of their entertainment value. It's like when when I started my stream, I think when everybody starts their stream, they're like really paranoid about having content that people actually want to watch. Mm -hmm. But but in my experience, doing what you do will automatically build a community around people who enjoy watching that. So, and we have like, history to to prove that. I mean, f first thing was uh, the Metroid series, just strictly yeah. for being Metroid. An entire community came from that. Yeah, For so I was like, if, I'm, I mean, if you just, like, made a stream where you just practiced stuff all day, then you would get an audience and community who enjoys watching and talking about, like, tricks and practicing them. It's like, whatever you stream, you can build a community around, so mm -hmm. you shouldn't try to, like, do what you see other people doing, because if you... I mean, at least for me, if you if I ever try to do something I'm not feeling or don't really want to do, I'm absolutely miserable, and I can't, like, 
yeah, I you, can't maintain that for long. Like playing a game I don't want to play. Yeah, yeah, it's like you're gonna you're gonna have less fun. You're gonna be angrier in general. You're not gonna play as well. Um, it's like burnout is real. Even if it's a game you like, you you'll know when it's time to to take a break or do something else. The only time we're allowed to be angry is when RNG screws us. <laughs> right, but but sometimes we still love it because that's just the rules of, of the game. That's it. I mean, I get lots of people ask me, um, wouldn't you like Mario 3 or, you know, whatever game you're running, wouldn't you like it so much more if there was no RNG? And the answer would be no, I wouldn't. I mean, I get mad at RNG all the time, but RNG is what makes me push, you know? You, you, right. you keep doing the attempts. It's it's well worth keeping. Maybe right. maybe up the percentage from 12.5 to like you know 35. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean like like in Mario One, there like there is a little bit of RNG, but it's the odds are always in your favor, which is one thing I like about it. Yeah, it must be nice to get no hands. Must be nice. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean that's it. Thanks a lot. Uh, we didn't. Ooh. Hopefully we didn't we didn't take too long for you. Um, no, it, that's great. Did you? Have, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And uh, yeah, anyone who wants to enjoy watching him do more runs, his his uh, channel is in is in the title. Yeah, I had lots of fun play, too, man. To the people who come and please don't ask me when I'm going to play Mario One again or if I'm ever going to play it again. That's it's like you were talking about questions that we get asked all the time. That's that's one of them. There you go. See, it's like any time, any time I play like any game, I have a handful of people saying, "Will you ever play this game again?" And it's like, you know, it's just the way we'll it goes see. as a streamer. You know, we'll you see. see. You don't, you don't, do you still have people asking you if you'll ever play Mario Maker again, for instance? Sometimes I get people asking yeah. me if I'm going to do 100% in Mario 3. And it's like, yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I don't think about that when I wake up. I think about, okay, I'm trying to improve this run. Right, right. You know, one thing Jason, at a time with speedrunning sometimes is the best way to go about it. Like I'll get asked what my favorite game to speedrun is, and my answer is the one I'm playing right now. <laughs> I, you're you're the in the moment kind of guy. Yeah, there right. And I, and I, like I, the reason I don't say what I'm gonna do next, like because people always want to know, it's because I change my mind literally all the time. Up like the night before I plan to start a project, I'll change my mind. So <laughs> it's best not to get people's hopes up. Exactly, exactly. You you will come back to Mario One when you feel it is the time is right. That's best right. best way. Well. Thanks, thanks for thanks for coming on, and thanks for being awesome, and thanks for sharing all this stuff with us. I mean, there's there's so much that me and I I can guarantee a whole bunch of other people. And honestly, you've answered probably so many questions that people ask, and they don't get a chance to have that that question answered. So, no, did. thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. No, no problem. I'm glad you have fun, and I will catch you later. All right. All right. All right. See you, man. Bye. Yo, what up, guys? Did you guys have fun?